hey, it's Joe Glass from the Automator. And now uh, this is a longer team meeting with Isaias and Irfan working through some stuff. And maybe Rizwan was there too. I haven't looked at it in a bit, but um, there's no real clear focus of exactly what we cover. But if you're wanting to learn auto hotkey, there's lots of great tips in this video. So check out the whole video. Make sure you watch it. Um, please like it. If you learn something, it really helps us out. We're the largest auto hockey channel out there. We usually share videos three times a week and it really helps us um, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Cheers. Uh, and there's a few things that we, <laughs> that happened there. I wanted to go over them with you. So yeah. Sure. And actually Joe just told me that it seems to be that it's not working on, on PowerPoint. Something. Yeah, actually, I, I, I have like less experience with PowerPoint call object. Mm. Yes, because uh, hold on, are you doing com object for Excel? Yeah, I am doing okay. com object for Excel. Mm. Okay. That is interesting. Uh, are you hearing us? But it, it is it is very yeah. very it's almost the same. Just to let you know. Yeah, it's almost the same. Right. Yeah. You you could you could I could as you could assume that that part right there is basically the same. Particularly the application object is almost the same in on Word, PowerPoint, all of the programs. Yes. This this particular part right there is basically the same thing for all of them. But I'm not really sure if there is something different with them, with them, but yeah, that's what you did. But let's see. Um, you got the active presentation in here. The active presentation. Hmm. Yeah, How about this one? This one didn't work. Yeah. Uh, this is working fine, but maybe hmm. active presentation uh, having some issue. But uh -huh. in Excel, it's active workbook. In PowerPoint, yeah. it should it it might be the active pre presentation. Uh, I I read the MS Dan and I like got right. it from there. Right, but what I wanted to really talk about is um a few things. So, you see this guy right here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 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 I think I understand why you did that, but there is a better way. What would you think is the better way? Think about it. Just take a few seconds and try to think about it. Actually, if I have a like condition, like use a regex with the version numbers, okay, yeah, and the bitness, then I might do it. But it's it's a case, I, well, and I don't know if there is a regex in working in the cases. The so you're close to it. So you're very close to it. First of all, whenever you see that you have the same at the beginning. And at the end, yeah, you have to think about a regular expression. Yeah, right here, I need a regular expression somewhere, okay? So the answer is yes, you need a regular expression, but you cannot put it in the switch statement because as yeah. you said, the switch statement, you cannot put a regular expression. But what if I told you, hey, I can force the name here. You see this variable name? Why don't we force it to be the case that I want whenever that matches? You see what I mean? So I, I it is true. It is a regular expression. Oh, if it yeah. is true, then yeah, I just that, force it to be that one. That Perfect. is very simple. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Before. Oh. Right. You do it beforehand, okay. and now you can get rid of all of these. And, and basically, if... If they have another version or whatever, you don't have to worry about it because the you already yeah we, we we are every single the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, that. And I, I, I wanted yeah. The main go ahead. point is we're programmatically getting the name of the executable. That doesn't mean we have to use what auto hotkey what gave we us. got right exactly. <laughs> That's what I didn't think. You know, I'm like now I understand right, why. Right, but uh, basically. Yeah. It, whenever you have a switch case statement and some of the cases don't do what you want, hey, just force them to do what you want. If it is one of the ones that you care about, just put them in the case that you care. So as to, for, in my case, for example, this is fine, 
that's totally fine because it's just a few of them. But as soon as you have 20, you know, 30, and you see that they can grow because, yeah, whenever they have a new version, you will have to come back here and fix it, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so that's going to be a problem. Well, that and in that case, then just go with a regular expression, force all of them to be the same thing, and now you don't have to worry about it. They can make a thousand new versions, and I don't care about it. I just, as, mm. as long as they keep the same... As long as they keep the same, um, yeah, as long as they see the, the, the same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it, it was only issue the portable version of the Grapfins. Yes. Right. Then at that point, just do that. Um, that's, so I, I wanted to let you think about it first so that when I gave you the answer, like kind of like clicks. Okay. So, <laughs> but, yeah, that, um, that, that was very simple. And, uh, right. It is a simple thing, but if, you have never done it. It, it. it is not easy to come by it. Oh, I yeah. started noticing that when I started thinking, hey, where can I use regular expressions? And then I figured out there's a bunch of yeah. places where I would just use regular expressions. Yeah, but but the, which is why I pointed this out yesterday. Is we both knew we should use a regular expression. We just, didn't, just didn't know where. Because right, exactly. we're doing it on what we got, but that doesn't right. matter. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is right. Like, it's it's understanding. Got to take a step back. Where are we getting the data, the source from? Oh, wait a minute. Right. We can do yeah. this before here. Right. The other do. thing, yeah. <laughs> the other thing that I have noticed very often that you do is that you do the opposite with the brackets. It's so weird. For example, in this case, probably because you have two things. I think that's the reason why you do it. You use brackets for one line, right? Yeah, I, I sometimes remove them, but... No, no, that's fine. The, the problem here is sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't. That is tricky yeah. because I don't know when you do it. The other yeah, thing that, is... That's, that's true. Right, so, so, so stick to one of them. If you decide you're going to use one of them, even if other people don't like it, if you're going to be using brackets, just use them all the time in that situation because it is easier to spot the issues. Because look at this. There are some times for one-liners, you put brackets. But check this one out. And, and Joe told me something is not working fine, so I came back here and I decided to look at the code. And I look at that and, I'm, and I go like, hold on, something is missing in there. Is it, is it opening? No, it's not opening. I spent like five minutes trying to figure out if I did something wrong or if you did something wrong, you, none of us did something wrong is that you're missing the brackets because, yeah, because the whole switch yeah. statement, you know, yeah, it, the yeah, whole it, switch it, statement yeah. belongs to that. If they, <laughs> there you should have used the brackets, but then you didn't. Not only you didn't, that's the other thing. Indentation is really important because if you have put it like that, then I know, oh no, the switch statement belongs to the if statement. But when you put it like this, I think you're missing something. Like, okay, hold on. What, what, what goes there? No. Mm -hmm. The point is both of them were on the same level. And also, you didn't have the brackets. I thought that there was something wrong with the code. But not only that, the next step is actually an else statement. Actually, you... You are like uh, expand, uh, collapse the code, which I usually don't do, and uh, that's why I feel hard to do that. Oh, so I'm gonna now, tell you the problem. Yeah, if you now, don't now, collapse the code, right? If you don't collapse the code, it's worse. Because if yeah. I'm reading and you say if uh, like here, it is gonna be worse because I'm gonna be here in the code, and I haven't noticed that I, this will never execute if the if statement is not true up there. I collapse the functions, but, uh -huh. now, but I will the code. Like, yeah, now I will try to collapse the code. Yeah. Um, let me do this. If you go to the settings, the hotkeys, that's, there's the fold all. Just have a hotkey for it. You see that? Okay. Alt, I have a hotkey for, well, I have alt zero in here. You can put whatever you want. I just changed it because it was Control K, Control Zero, something like that, or Control K, Control Z. 
I just put it for something. I, but the point is, the reason why I always fold first is because it's easier to read. So I do this, take a look at which functions you have. Basically, I'm doing the outline. You see the outline down here? But sometimes I don't want too much granularity. So I don't want to be too specific. I just wanted to look at this part of the code and that's it. And I don't want anything else distracting me. So I fold everything by doing alt zero. But the problem is, even if you said like, um, no, it is, uh, um, it's because I don't fold the code. It would be worse because if I look for Excel, cool. And now I start working on Excel and I'm looking at Excel. I might not notice that this code will never execute because there's an if statement. <laughs> yeah. And if the if statement is not true, none of this matters. You see what I mean? Yes. So that's really important. And if I'm down here looking at Explorer and I'm not looking at the freaking if statement, it's very far away from me. I don't know that this will never execute if the first condition is met. So basically, as soon as you at least, at least move this to the right, that helps a lot. That, that automatically helps a lot. But when I have so much code that depends on an if statement, I would definitely, hey, let me just add a, the brackets. I'm going to show you something interesting. Because no matter where you are, you see this line right here? Whenever I'm working with this, I know that that line has, it belongs to the switch, right? It always yeah. belongs to the switch. So then I realize, okay, if that's from the switch, hey, I'm two tabs away from the switch. Something is going on. So I see the two tabs and I'm like, oh, hold on. The switch statement depends on something else. I can just collapse it. Oh, hold on. Yeah, there's an if statement here. You see what I mean? We use, the tab, the indentation, and the lines like this to figure out if the code is in an if statement or not. It's really important, right? So, so just keep that in mind for, with the if statements. Um, if it is just one liner, decide whether you want to put them or not. But as soon as you have more than one line, so if one more than one line depends on that if statement, I would I just put them. <laughs> You're saving a lot of time just, just by putting those in there. Now, this thing here, notice that this is a not and this is a true. Yeah. So they depend on each other. Is there any I, reasons I, I, why I, you put them separately? Uh because of the switch just I mean, it was very long and yeah. I yeah, but, but as soon as you put the brackets, then that doesn't matter, you see? <laughs> but basically in this instance, what I would do is I would grab this code, Move it put about. it up here. Okay. And this would be, I don't even need, I don't even need an else. I, I just, think uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, because I'm this sure. will either contain a number or will be zero. Yes. And that now allows that your code is logical. You think about it and you say, OK, if that is active, do this. If it is not, then do that. And now you see that all of this actually refers to the same thing that is this window yeah. right here right you you see the 95 line <laughs> it's it's it, it is for it is just for the open safe dialog boxes right so we add them later and uh, yeah it the and you, you them, return right there add, yeah that's yeah, perfect yeah adding adding them was easy but like utilizing right. them like getting parts from them was tricky so i was like focusing in that <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah. So, but in this in this case, whenever you have an if statement, and then you find that you're doing another if statement, but the opposite of the other one. So, if you you find yourself doing that, it's either an else if, or 
it is just an else because it's the same it's the same condition it's just the opposite of the condition yeah so it is the same just condition. Do that. last thing that i noticed in here was um the notify function that you're having here is the old one when i tried to use it on my computer it was putting the notification in the wrong monitor yeah so yeah here the the monitor um was supposed to get the primary i guess the function yeah, so probably it, you will have it, to if, copy if, the if, you have to copy the notify function well the notify object in here to have the latest one i guess yeah um, let me let me replace it i didn't want to do that just because i don't know how you put the the things and if something changed i didn't want no, to break the code okay. no it, it will not break you can just all right it. cool so i want to do that <clears throat> the last one that i'm going to mention we cannot fix it i don't think we should fix it right now um joe told me no we just assume in that case but I, I just wanted to point it out just for you to have it in mind by the way you see here wherever you put switch or whatever you put a yeah. zero there <laughs> I, I i know that you like putting the one and the zeros because it's shorter but it doesn't yeah. make sense and sometimes i think it's just that you made a mistake and I was just removing that. And then I was like, hold on, is he talking about the case statement? So because how I think about it is they made you a question. They asked you, they ask you a question. They asked, is that case sensitive? Yes or no? If the answer is a yes or a no, don't put numbers in there because it doesn't make sense. And then one might think that you made a mistake and removed the code, but that's not it. This is true or false here. Is case sensitive? True. Is case sensitive? False. If you put a number, it's just like if you ask me, hey, do you want to go to lunch? Zero. What? <laughs> yeah, zero. What, what, what does that mean? Zero. I'm just telling you zero. So basically, you have to think, when I'm reading code, when, when people are reading code, they're reading. They're actually trying to read what you wrote. And when you say switch case statement is zero, it makes no sense. It's easier to write. It just doesn't make sense. Now here, um, just to keep that in mind, but here in the code, what happened was I was just testing it and I looked at it and I see that you are two things. There's two things going on in here. One, there is a hard coded hard key here. Problem with that is, that's not my hotkey. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> that's gonna be a that's gonna be a problem, right? So, um, uh, Joe told me leave it like that. We're gonna assume that that's the hotkey. So, in all of the programs, whenever you're doing, if you're sending hotkeys, you're probably assuming that that is a default hotkey, and that's probably not the thing. So, if it fails, it might be because we are assuming that the hotkey is that. So that's one of the things. Well, Second well, of all, is this, the bare yeah. minimum, um, I'd just say, is put a comment there to say, yeah. if it doesn't work for you, check to see if this you've changed your the, hotkey. Yeah, so this is the default hotkey. If you change yours, it would not work. Whatever. Now, this right here, that is wrong. Even though Joe told me that it works for him, but that doesn't work because after the keys, what you're gonna put there is the control. And in the control, you cannot say A. Active control, doesn't it that mean? No, there is no active control. No, that really? only works in the window title. No. If you, omit, you have to if, omit it. You have to omit it. That's what you have to do. Omit that parameter. Otherwise, you have to specify the control class and then the text or the handle or an object. Nothing else. You're going to put an A in there. Where you can put an A when there is a window title. Yes, the window title can be A for active. Just to let you know. Joe told me that it works on your end, and I'm like, how does that work? You're 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 actually 
failing with that particular property, I maybe, wouldn't have expected it to work. Maybe they didn't document it. <laughs> how how does it work then? I don't know. <laughs> that might be true. Maybe it's not documented. Yeah, it is. But I, I can guarantee it's not sending it to the active control because there is no such a thing as an active control. What you have is a focused control. Oh. It sounds similar, but it's not yeah. the same. Okay? Not so so you, it's not the same. You can have a focused control one at a time, but not an active control. You can have active windows. That, that That's... Which I don't know how to even explain that. Like, <laughs> if somebody tells me, like, what is the difference between a focus control and an active control, uh, an active window? I would say focus control has more to do with the keyboard. The focus control takes input from the keyboard. That's what it does. But an active window doesn't mean doesn't mean that it's taking control from the keyboard. That, but there is a difference. And you don't have active controls. That's something for sure. It's just that I was surprised when Joe told me, but this is working. And I'm like, how is that working? <laughs> there is no control called A in there. Like that's that's not a thing. So what you can do is just simply omit that parameter or make it, uh, I, don't even put it blank. Because if you pass blank to it, it, it also fails. It's just omitting that, just so you know. Sometimes we... Pass an empty parameter or the hotkey. Keep yeah. Complain, complain. I don't know where I. There are it. yeah. So so that is one of those tricky situations. In some functions, you have to pass a blank parameter mm -hmm. if you don't. What is the difference? Well, the difference is if you have it like this. You see yeah. that? You don't have to even pass it. No, you have to pass blank. Oh, 100% okay. sure. Yes. Because down here, you're going to call it somewhere. Well, you you make you at least tried here, you know, that fixes your problem. Because if it is not set, you grab it, right? If it is set, you grab it. The fact that you put the question mark allows you to either pass it or not pass it, right? But if you didn't have that, and you said, oh no, actually this will fail. This will fail. So, so let me show you. We create a new function here. My test function, hwnd equals blank. And if, so we have hwnd equals hwnd, Um, true or false, and then message process, right? So if I call test, I have to, well, in this case, I, I'm already setting it to blank, so it doesn't really matter there, right? Fine. But there are situations like this, you put a question mark there, that will fail. So you have to pass blank. You have to at least make it blank. You see that? Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Now what happened there? Now that makes sense because question right. mark changes the thing, yeah. Exactly. So when, when you have a function, that you make it like this and it fails is because they are using the question mark. Standard and the thing is, is, is auto hotkey function, I think. Sorry, control send? Yes. Yeah, control send, yeah. Yeah, it is an auto hotkey function. And in that case, you can make it, you know, omit it completely. Yeah. And um, when you do, then it means that whatever you're sending, it will be sent to the window instead of one of the controls. So in that case, just activate the window and use the send command. That's what I would do. Like when act so when activate this guy, 
and then just use the normal send because you're not util you're not using control send for what is meant. If you're not going to send the text to a given control, then don't use control send, I guess. Just activate the window and send it to it. Now, if you don't want to activate the window, like you don't want the window to pop up in front of the user, for example, then control send and sending it to that window, that's OK. I think it, it might work. Um, but you don't know how the window is going to respond to that message, because that's not a normal message. And that depends on how the window answers, because the window can't answer to that incorrectly. So just, just so you know, there's a lot of little things to take into consideration. Sometimes we are assuming things here, um, and sometimes we're using some functions in a way that I'm I was surprised when Joe told me that that worked. I was going to say, like, that shouldn't work. That, that should break. That, that's not going to work. But he said, no, I, have I saw him using it. And I was like, OK, <laughs> yeah, that's new. <laughs> OK. But and that's the thing. Maybe to your point, maybe they don't have it documented. And that means it might work. It might not work. It might make a bug, maybe break something. We don't know. So it's best not to use that. At least in this in this particular situation, yeah. right? You see, they always pass the control name. Sometimes, look the control name here, or yeah. omit, omit it. it. Omit yep. It. You see. So the fact that you pass the A and it somehow worked, I'm I'm kind of like, holy crap, that's new. <laughs> I don't know how that worked, but there you go. So, by the way, freaking cool tool. Um, I actually, we tested it and I was telling Joe, hey, I, I think I'm going to be using this the whole time because um, we want to get the path of files not only in Explorer or in some programs, just everywhere. So, yeah, cool. Looking good, looking good. Just, um, by the way, let me test it that I didn't break anything while I was explaining those. So, uh, let me just open a file. Uh, here. No. Windows control shift C, huh? Yeah, I made it Windows C. So this is working. So you see the change that I did with the if statement didn't didn't break anything. You see that? Yes. So now here it will not work. This is what happened to me. There we go. Yeah. Now, what I told Joe is all of this. Um, uh, how, how about how about you uh, put a hotkey in a variable in the start of the script and some? You no, I was just gonna say all of these settings. For example, the settings, the keyboard shortcuts, and everything. They can... are basically in can... JSON can... files. Yeah, okay. they are, but. Don't 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 spend time on that. Don't spend time on that. So what I told Joe is those are JSON files that we could read. So I could just go and figure out what the hotkey for that is. But don't worry about it right now because that that is a, that is work that I changed the hotkey. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to change it. Okay. So I think most of the people will have the default for that because most of the people don't change it. I don't think you have changed it, right? So yeah, I haven't it's not everybody who, who goes ahead and changes all the hotkeys. But a, por a possible solution for later might be, hey, we just read that file and take a look at what is the hotkey that we care about. And you will get your answer. The only thing is that I don't even know in which format they save it. So No, I, I, I have it. It's the, the key bindings.json file. Right, exactly. Which you don't have unless you change the hotkey, by the way. Which makes yeah, exactly. But, that's, um, that's the point. You can see the command is copy file path. So it's just a JSON file. And we can search. So we load the JSON with the JSON library and look for that one. And I have the hotkey. That's not the problem. The problem is that this one is kind of like, for example, in my case. Yeah, but it's listed. The key yeah, it is listed there. And the, and the command tells you what we're doing. So now, now check that out. In mine, it is two hotkeys, alt backtick and then alt P. 
how does that show up in there? I have no idea. <laughs> you see? So 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 look for your key bindings.json under your users. Um right, exactly. It's a ludicrous path. <laughs> users app data roaming code user. Right, here it goes. Look at look at all the ones that I have changed. <laughs> I actually once I installed once I installed um VS Code, the first thing I did was change a lot of hotkeys. And that's one of the things. So this is the key combination, and this is the command. So we can do that. Oh, that is so annoying. Why, did, why didn't they think about using this as the key? Yeah, I know. I right? Know. Oh, God. Well, no, I, I, well, with the minus, that's a different key than that one, right? Oh, gee. All right, so... Um, what I could do is uh, open folder global key, folder space support workspace support. But what what sucks is we're gonna have to change the process of our tool to read that once, right, or or something because yeah. we don't want to read that every so, time. Right? So there we go. You see, you see, you have a space in there. So that means that when you have a space, that means that there are two different hotkeys being triggered: Alt Baptic, Alt O. How about we write our own hotkey in there and then use that? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, if I remember right, you can have multiple hotkeys for the same thing, so that's not a bad idea. So basically, when I when I open a hotkey, um, and I can add a key binding. Look at that, and I could have crazy one. No, the one that he just had. Control shift. No, but, C. but if they have Control Shift C for something else, we can't. Right. No, no. So the default, the default is Control Shift C. I just changed mine. I know. But yeah. So if but I use Control Shift C for something else. Right. Yeah. But we can send a, 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 a an invisible key like F twenty four. I don't. That's well, what I just said was creating a, a crazy. Hot key. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah. Because the point is, you can have two hot keys for the same action if you want. Right. That's totally doable. So I, I, I don't know how that looks in the file though. So can fold we, all. Can we create F24? Look at that. Yeah. Well, no, I don't think we can. I don't know how that would work, but here it just shows up as a new. So yeah, we definitely could just add one in that file if there's one. And only if the file is created, right? So look at that. We do have F6. I don't know what F24 would do, and let's let's do this. Default all, default all that I have for here instead of that. Oh, that's the default one for there. Oh, control K, control zero. Yeah, yeah, but for control shift C is the one that I added. Control shift C. Where's control shift C? Oh. Oh, down here. Okay, it just gets appended. So the original hotkey never gets deleted. That's interesting. Really? But it's not being really shown in here. So but, you but see, I the don't have mine. Mine doesn't have the original stuff. Oh, that's so weird. My, my change. Okay. Which is. But I don't see. Yeah, I don't see it here because I, I'm looking at the fold all, and I'm looking for the control K control zero. And I don't see it, but in the key bindings, I do find Control K, Control Zero. I don't know. It, it might be one of those things. Is there's at some point you changed it and then reverted. oh no, yeah, that's what it's doing, like deleting it minus fold all here, so it removed that one. Okay, so this keeps so, track of what you did. Keep me. Um, probably they're allowing you to like have an undo at a later point. Is that yeah? That we do. We do. Yes. Yeah. If I remove the, the hotkey I have, then it becomes the original one. But here, so let's say that I say F12. No, sorry, F11. No, oh, sorry, but I'm talking about F13. So supposedly, I'm going to create the F13. Okay. Let me now reload this thing just in case. And now with hot, another hotkey, I will... F1 converted to F13 and see if that folds everything up because 
So here everything is opened. And if I do F1, no. Oh, yes, we can. <laughs> yes. So, so you can, can have you F24 can have as a hotkey or something. Control Shift Alt to F24. You put it in, and we don't, we don't, we never mess with their hotkeys. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there you go. You, you, I, I just, I'm hitting F1 from auto hotkey, converting it to F23, and it's working just fine. So there you go. That's a that might be the best solution at least for this. We you you would look target, for target JSON so, file, right? So basically, you just look up um, the path for the key bindings. Is that one here, which I could open in? What, what the hell? That's so annoying. Ah, here. Open in File Explorer. You copy that. So let me send you. Ironically, if you could have used our tool. Uh, right, exactly. <laughs> well, just change your user, I guess. No, this one here. Uh, what? Oh, copy and then share the copy. So just change your username in there, and then you have the, the file in there. The point is, if it exists, because Basically, right. it probably is that it never, it sometimes doesn't exist, right? Yes. But so but if it exists, then we insert, we inject a new key in there with a crazy hotkey. And then our tool just simply sends that hotkey every single time. That's it. But I don't know, Joe, if, he, if you want him working on that right now. Or whatever, but that's yeah, fine. We can get it updated. That's not it shouldn't be a very technical. Exactly. So as you can see, 